Oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, excuse the way the place looks. I just haven't had visitors in a while. All right, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> uh, welcome to the studio. If we haven't met, my name is Ryan, and as you can see here, this is just a little time lapse video. I'm painting a little landscape, a la prima painting, um, and just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about you know what I'm doing here and this and that, and maybe touch on a few other topics. I wanted to talk about the use of photo references in the creation of fine art because I know that's something a lot of us do myself included um, and I thought that would be an interesting topic of discussion here so as you can see I'm just painting a waterfall this is an 11 by 14 inch stretched linen canvas and just painting a fun little waterfall painting and and um, of course I'm using a photo reference to do this because I don't have a waterfall in my studio, and I'm trying to change that. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, who else, what other artist in the world has an actual waterfall in their indoor studio? I, no one I can think of, so um, I would love to make that happen. That would be so sweet. So if anybody uh, feels so inclined... Uh, links in the description where you can send donations to Ryan Delgado Art Studios and I'll see about getting a waterfall in my studio. Wouldn't that be awesome? Anyway, uh, so uh, here I'm just doing the underpainting stage. If you watch my stages of underpainting or stages of painting, oil painting videos that I posted a few years ago now, I can't believe it's been that long, but uh, this is how I kind of do how I start off every single painting that I do. I do an underpainting using some kind of umber. Some, I'm using kind of a combination here of raw umber with transparent red oxide uh, for the for this underpainting. And these, this dark color that I'm applying now, this is actually some black and blue, maybe a little bit of purple, and I'm just putting in the dark accents here where these rock formations are. These are the, the darkest parts of the, of the painting, of the scene here. But um, anyway, getting back to photo references. Um, I know this is something that a lot of us artists, you know, a lot of fine artists take advantage of, of photo references. It's, it's a convenience, um, and it's something that a lot of us do. But um, I know that I, I don't think there's any artist out there Pretty much every artist out there would probably universally agree that there's no substitute for working from life. There just isn't. If you want the best possible perspective of, of your subject as it exists in nature, then direct observation is, is the way to go. Uh, but, you know, there, there do come those times uh, when working from a photo reference uh, becomes convenient and maybe even necessary, and uh, and that and that's that's how we that's how we go about it. Uh, like me, for instance, I, I do work from photo references, uh, doing this waterfall. Um, I don't live near very many waterfalls, and so it's it's a lot more convenient for me rather than to 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 bring a um, you know, an easel, you know, an outdoor plein air easel or something to, to go find a waterfall to paint plein air. It's a lot easier for me to go out and if there's a waterfall around to take a picture of it and just bring it back to the studio, um, and paint it like that. So it's, it's convenient. It's easier to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are ways to use a photo reference effectively and efficiently. I, I don't think they should become 
a crutch and that's that's point number one I think is don't let photo references become a crutch don't let that be your only source material for all the work that you do uh, and, and it's important because if working from life trains our eyes to and our brains to, to see things as they are in nature then it would make sense that working from photos would train our eyes to see things the way a camera sees them and a camera sees things way differently than our eyes do um, and before long if we've worked exclusively from photos then our drawings and our paintings are going to reflect that and that's not really a good thing because um, the the camera flattens out images I mean that's that's what a camera does it creates a two-dimensional uh, representation of a three-dimensional reality and our eyes see the three-dimensional reality the camera sees it in two dimensions and it and it puts it in that perspective so uh, so if you're going to use photo references I think it's important to at least train your eye to see the subject in the photograph as you would see it in nature um, and that may be easier said than done but it's it, it is doable I think the more experience you have working from life the the easier it is to look at a photograph and say you know what this is I, I know based on my experience that this is not what this thing whatever it may be looks like in nature and I know the necessary adjustments I need to make in my painting to make it look real um, and, and that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of what we need to do is when we, we work from a photo reference not to copy the photos verbatim I see so many artists doing that and one of the biggest reasons our drawings and our painting and our paintings from photo references fail is because we're trying to copy everything that we see in the photograph um, and the and the reason why that doesn't work is because think about this the camera when you take a picture the camera has already made its own flattened out photocopy of nature and now we as artists are basically trying to create a man-made photocopy of that original photocopy and and trying to make it look real and it just doesn't work um, so take the knowledge wisdom and, and experience you have working from life and and apply that to your painting from from photos so if you watch this um, something you might notice is I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be spending a lot more time on that waterfall than anything else um, I'm, I'm, I'm being a lot more careful about detail and about the brushwork than I am say with the the rocky cliff in the background like if you look at that it's really just a a few brush strokes of color in the background of, of brown and gray and, and black and that little transition by the way was just where I took a break from the painting this is a true a la prima um, I, I did this all in one sitting so it took me about two and a half hours or so from start to finish and just kind of going in with a little bit of greenish color to represent some moss growing on those rocks in the background but really that's about it there's not going to be a whole lot of detail in that background because the waterfall is my subject and that's what I want the viewer to focus on uh, and that's how the eye works when uh, when we're looking at something the thing that we're looking directly at 
is what our eyes are focused on. Everything else is just kind of off to the side, literally. It's, that's our peripheral vision, uh, and it's, it, everything that we're not looking at is, is kind of a blur. It's out of focus. We're not worried about it. Our eyes aren't worried about it. But when you take a photograph of, of something, the camera is going to have everything, at least everything that's on the same plane in the picture, in equal focus. And that's the difference between our eyes and the camera, is that the camera puts everything that's on the same plane in equal focus. And our eyes don't do that. Our, our eyes only focus on what we're looking at, directly at. And so, without even thinking about it, if we're working from a photo reference, that's what our... That's, that's what we're going to do in our painting. We're going to have everything that's on the same picture plane there it is going to be equally in focus with everything else. And that's how our paintings kind of look flattened out. They, they don't have the same dimension that they would if, uh, if we were seeing our subject in, in nature, in life. Um, and, so, and so that's one way. I would say that you can train your eye to look at a photo reference and say, you know what, whatever my subject is that I'm painting, whatever I want the viewer to focus on, that is what I'm going to have more or less in focus. That's more or less what the focal point of the painting is going to be. Everything else can just just kind of be a, a minimal detail, like what I'm doing in in this painting. Um, that That waterfall is my is my focal point. Um, and that rocky cliff, kind of off to the, the left side of the waterfall there, is more or less just a few strokes of color, just a suggestion of detail. No real um, finished detail is there. It's, it's um, an impressionistic idea of what that cliff is. And I know you can't see the photo reference um, that I'm working from, but I really am using it as a, a reference. I'm not copying it verbatim. Because uh, remember, it, it's, it's a supplement uh, for our paintings. We're not, we're not machines trying to recreate a photograph. We're artists trying to create a painting. Um, so anyway, uh, this is almost finished here. I'm, I'm kind of putting in some of the last little details of the of the waterfall. Um, but you know, it, the other thing about photo references, I think, is to just use your freedom. You know, kind of what Bob Ross likes to likes to say is, you know, this is your world. So if you're working from a photo reference, don't copy it verbatim. You, you know, if you want to leave out certain details, then leave them out. Uh, or if you want to focus on something um, more than you know something else that's in the photo, then then do that. If you if like if there's a tree in the in the picture uh, and you don't like where that tree is placed, then move it over somewhere or remove it altogether. Um, but you know have a plan, of course have a plan. Don't try to wing it because that's another area where things kind of start to fail but um, anyway um, as you can see this is coming up on the last few details um, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and that I didn't ramble on too much but uh, hopefully there was something here that was beneficial and helpful for you in your own work, or at the very least, you know, you can just hit the mute button and enjoy the painting. But uh, stick around to the end. Um, and if you're interested in this painting and you like what you see here, I'll share some details with you on how you can purchase it because this is available. Um, it's a fairly new painting. I just did it 
a few weeks ago um, and I still have it so uh, I'll, I'll share those details with you guys as soon as uh, as soon as the painting or as soon as the video here is is concluded so uh, thanks for watching guys and take care of yourselves and God bless you all everyone thanks again so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and if you enjoy the painting that i did guess what i have good news for you it is available it's available directly from me so you won't have to worry about buying it from a gallery or or from some other third party it's going to come directly from me and obviously it has not been varnished yet it hasn't been framed yet but it will be so you don't have to worry about that um if you purchase this painting, it's going to arrive completely framed, ready to hang in all of its glory. So don't worry about that. It will be framed. Uh, the total price for it is going to run somewhere between $1,100 and $1,200. And that, of course, includes the painting framed uh, and ready to hang. And it will also include all of the shipping costs involved. So you won't have to worry about paying extra for that. And so if that sounds good, if that sounds like a fair price point and you are interested, just send me an email at ryandelgadoart at gmail.com. And in the subject line, just put split falls or split falls painting, something like that. So that way I know which painting you're talking about. And, uh, and we'll go from there. We'll talk about payment options. If you, if you want to pay it in installments, that is perfectly acceptable. Or if you want to pay it all together in full, all at once, that's that's fine with me too. Um, but just know that it will only ship once it's completely paid in full. Because I have made that mistake before. And I'll never make that mistake again. So uh, again, thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.